In this video, we will show you how to set up things so you're ready to use the new Spectrophotometric Color Correction Tool. In a follow-on video, we will show you how to actually use this tool. When dealing with broadband RGB or LRGB images, I've always been a fan of using the Photometric Color Calibration Tool as part of my linear workflow. I love the idea that my color was better calibrated to a more objective standard. Using an astrometric solution, stars seen by your sensor are compared to stars from a photometric catalog and regression is run to calibrate your image. Pixinsight has now released a new tool called SPCC for the Spectral Photometric Color Calibration Tool, which improves substantially over what the PCC tool did. PCC used a broadband measure of the stars taken from Earth, meaning that atmospheric effects were folded into the data. SPCC, on the other hand, uses a new database of star spectrophotometric data that's been collected from space so it does not suffer from the atmospheric effects. It uses 300 measures of the spectrum of each star, as well as the spectral response from your sensor and filter set to determine the proper color and brightness for the stars in your image. PixInsight claims that SPCC is 400% more accurate than what could be achieved with PCC. While SPCC is baked into the current release of PixInsight, there are a few things you need to do in order to run SPCC for the first time. First, you must download the new GDR3 SP catalogs, as this is the data that really drives SPCC. These can be found in the software distribution download page on the PI website. When you look at this page and scroll down, you'll see the old uh, Gaia DR3 section, but now there's two other entries. There is a DR3 SP complete set and the DR3 SP small set. The small set is only small in relative terms. In it, you'll find four files, which together add up to 11.1 gigabytes in size for a database that covers 34.5 million stars. This database is described as being sufficient if you're dealing using telescopes that have between, say, 500 and 700 millimeters of focal length. The other catalog, the complete catalog, is much larger. It consists of 20 files that add up to a whopping 63.2 gigabytes in size and covers 220 million stars. With that database, you can handle just about any scope that you're likely to get your hands on. You can choose one and download it, or both if you prefer. Just make sure that they're stored in different locations and make sure not to intermingle the files. Because of the sizes involved here, downloading this data can be a project in itself. It'll take some time and some storage, so plan ahead to make sure you'll have the data before you actually need it. Save this data to a place where you have sufficient storage and preferably fast storage. Now, I have telescopes that are, have longer focal lengths than 700 millimeters, so I opted to download the complete set and just the complete set. I ended up storing that on a secondary hard drive, which is also a very fast NVMe SSD. This worked out really well as it helps to make for quick processing times. Once you've downloaded the data, the next step is to tell PixInsight where that data is. And in order to do that, we're going to want to pull up the Gaia process. So let's get rid of this. And if we go under process and look for Gaia and open that up, uh, Gaia is the tool that manages access to all the various catalogs that are used um, for astrometric and photometric uh, applications. The first thing we want to do is make sure we're dealing with the DR3 SP, and there are, there are the other flavors of that, so make sure you have that selected. Next, you can come down to the wrench, open that up, and from here you can navigate to the point in your file system where you've stored the catalog files. You select all of the entries for your catalog file, and you say, okay, this registers all those files with the Gaia tool, which enables PixInsight to work with them. At this point, we're done with this step. The next thing to do is to make sure the image that you want to use is ready for that use. First off, it should be a linear image. Second off, it has to be a color image. So if this is from a one-shot color camera, you should be all set. If it's from a mono camera, then you're going to want to uh, combine those images using the channel combination tool to create the first color version that you can work from. 
Finally, your image must have an astrometric solution. This is a change from the earlier days of PCC, where the tool itself created the astrometric solution. The philosophy has now changed. It is expected that the astrometric solution is created as part of the WBPP script that handles all the pre-processing tasks for the image. Master images come out of the process with such a solution, and there are means to propagate this solution as the processing progresses. So if your image has come from a WBPP run recently, you're probably all set to go. If it, if it does not have an astrometric solution, then you'll have to make sure you add that uh, by using the image solver script to create that and attach it to the image. We go under scripts, image analysis, we can pull up the image solver script. The image solver script uh, needs basically four pieces of information in order to determine an accurate astrometric uh, solution. First off, it needs the rough coordinates of the uh, target area. It doesn't have to be super precise. If you know them, you can put them in, or if it's pulled in from the metadata of your image, you may be all set. Otherwise, you can search, use the search uh, button here, enter in the name of the target, the designation for the target, and then it'll create a set of coordinates which are useful. Next thing you need to know is the rough date the image was taken. You may know when that date was, or it may be pulled from your metadata. And finally, you need to know something about your scope and your camera. The critical piece of information is the focal length for your scope, and the other piece of information is the size in microns for, for the pixels on your sensor. Once you have this astrometric solution in place, you're ready to use the SPCC tool, and we will demonstrate how this is done in the next video.